What's good everybody, Timeless Traveler here and welcome back to my How to Redstone series. And in today's episode, we're going to be going over the logic gates. Logic gates allow you to do a multitude of things with your redstone contraptions and chances are most likely for anyone that has built any form of redstone contraption or even just a basic door with a button, lever, or pressure plate, you have already used a logic gate and may not have known it. Now, of course, for anyone that is wanting to use logic gates in their redstone contraptions and is just now learning how to do these, keep in mind that the way that we have these set up now is not the only way to do a logic gate for your redstone contraptions. You could be using different sorts of inputs, different types of outputs. The way we have this set up now is strictly for tutorial and demonstration purposes only. With that said, you must understand the concepts of the gates before you actually apply them into your redstone builds, and that is what the aim of this tutorial is going to do. And if you want to learn more about redstone and not just logic gates, go ahead and take a look at my entire how to redstone playlist that's going to be down below in the description and at the end of this video for your convenience. We are going to cover everything redstone in this series, and we already have plenty of episodes to cover the basics of redstone. And of course, if you enjoy seeing content like this, let me know down below with a comment and a like. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And of course, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all future videos and content. Now, without any further ado, let's break down some of these logic gates. All right, team, let's get our logic gate book real quick. And let's take a look at what logic gates are first and foremost. The logic gate is a redstone circuit based in Boolean logic where the output of any circuit reflects the state and or states of its inputs. For those who don't know, Boolean logic is a form of algebra where all values must be either true or false. In our case of redstone usage, our values of true and false correlate to our inputs and outputs being on and off. Essentially, anything that is working off of a logic gate, you it is either going to be on or it is going to be off. There is no, oh, maybe it'll be on, maybe it'll be off. No, it's very definite. It's very absolute. We have 12 logic gates that we're going to be going over. We have the input output gate or just your basic basic gate, the not gate, the or gate, the nor gate, and gate, nand gate, the xor or zor gate, the x nor gate, the rs nor latch, rs nand latch, burnout clock, and an imply gate. I imagine some of you may be thinking that I'm speaking gibberish right now, but I assure you, don't worry, you'll be able to understand each and every one of these as we go through with them. Now let's bring our attention over to this side, the input output gate. It has one input and it has one output. If the input is on, the output will also be on. If the input is off, so is the output. That is the most basic logic gate. If you turn the input on, output's gonna turn on. Very simple, you have used this gate before, Whenever you have turned, opened a door, um, pushed a fence gate, any, anything like that, you have used the input output gate. Coming over to our second gate, we have the not gate. It's going to have one input, and it is also known as an inverter since it inverts the output. So essentially, if the input is off, the output is on. If the input is on, then the output is off. As we can see here, we are using the redstone torch to invert the signal. The input is off, it's in its default state. The torch is by default on, unless we power this block and invert the signal. So now we have this input on, that output is now off, vice versa. Very simple, just like this, but we just kind of flip it around a bit. Then we're gonna step things up just a little bit more. We're going to introduce the OR gate. It has two or more inputs. If any one input is on, the output will also be on. The output will only be off if all inputs are off. A little easier way of understanding this is that the output will be on if one or the other input is on. So if we go ahead, input A, we have an output. Input B, we have an output. It doesn't matter which one you use, you can even slap another one on here. You're gonna get the same result because we can have more than one input. The result is going to be the same. You can have both inputs on, and the output is going to be the same. It'll only turn off if both inputs are also off. Understanding how the NOT gate works, we can combine that with an OR gate to create a NOR gate. It has two or more inputs, and just like the OR gate, but it just has a NOT gate as its output. If any one input is on, the output will be off. All inputs must be off for the output to be on. 
So as we can see here, it is just like the OR gate, but we have an inverter attached on or a NOT gate. So by default, these inputs are off, the output is on. If we turn on either one of these, then the output will turn off because this block will power inverting our redstone torch. And we can have both of these on, it does not matter. It will be the same as long as one of these is on. And then if both of them turn back off, then we have our output in its on state. Moving on to a different type of logic gate, a little bit more secure for your redstone builds, we have the AND gate. It has two or more inputs, and all inputs must be on for the output to be on. One way of understanding how the AND gate works is that you need, so say right here we have two inputs, input A and input B. You need input A and input B on for us to have an output in its on state. So it doesn't work like an OR gate. We can't have one or the other. It's going to be off unless both are turned on, just like that. And the moment we turn one of them back off, the output is also going to turn off. Now understanding that, we can add an inverter and create a NAND gate. It has two or more inputs, and it is same as the AND gate, but it has a NOT gate as its output. All inputs need to be on for the output to be off and vice versa. Technically, we already had an inverter for the regular AND gates. However, because these by default are on, then we have then this already is a NOT gate in itself. We just put two NOT gates together, combine it with some dust, and then put a torch at the end in its off state because it's powered, which gives us a regular AND gate. For a NAND gate, we cut out that second inverter and just have these two NOT gates here, powering this by default if these are both off. So in order to turn that output off, both inputs must be on, complete opposite of our AND gate. So now that we understand our basic input output gates, our NOT gates, OR gates, and AND gates, we can move on to things a little bit more complex and interesting. And moving on into it, we have the XOR gate. It has two inputs. It is short for exclusive OR, meaning that only one input can be on for the output to be on. So unlike the basic OR gates that allowed us to have both inputs on and still provide us with an output, this is designed to only allow one exclusively to be on. If this one's on, then we cannot have this one on. So let's demonstrate real quick. So now we have an output, and if we turn that back off, both out inputs are off, out both inputs are off, output is off. If we turn on our second input, we have an output there. So here's where it will prevent us from having both of them on. It will simply just turn off. So the only way we can have an output is if just one of them is on. That's why we call an exclusive OR gate or an XOR gate. And then our next one is going to be the XNOR gate. So it has two inputs and it's same as the XOR gate, but with a NOT gate as the output. So we have the opposite results. Only one input can be on for the output to be off. So as you can see here, it is exactly the same as the XOR gate. We just have an inverter on the other side. So our default output state will be on instead of it being off. So just like before, if we turn on just one, we have ourselves the output being off. If we turn both of them on, then we have the output being on. So we can only have one on or the other for us to turn off the output. Moving on to our memory circuit, we have the RS NOR latch. Now this is where things get a little bit different. Previously, we've only ever had one output, but with the RS NOR latch, we have two inputs and two outputs. It is also known as the reset switch. You may hear many people that do redstone call it a reset switch or a, an RS latch or anything like that, but it's generally, we typically call it a reset switch or an RS NOR latch. It is a basic memory cell, meaning that it can remember which input was last on by locking its respective output. That same input needs to be off for the opposing output to be on. So let's break down what that means real quick. So right here we have two levers in their off state. We have this that is set to on. And if we hit the switch, it's going to flip over there. Now, no matter what we do, now that it's been switched over, we can't do anything about it. So we have to reset it 
by hitting the switch over here. Now, notice if this one is on, we can't actually reset it. It is locked in and it's in, it's, it's in memory mode. It's remembering what its previous state was. We got one more memory circuit for you. We have the RS NAND latch. So this one also has two inputs and two outputs, similar to the RS NOR latch, but using inverters. Both outputs can be on at the same time, but only one output can be off at a time. As long as one input is on, the opposite output is locked in its off state. So coming over here, it is very similar to our RS NOR latch, except we have, like I mentioned, the inverters here. And by default, they are both going to be on, so we can power two things at once. However, if we flick a switch, we can turn one of them on and do the same thing, of course, on the other side. Now, here's how we can lock it in and use it as a memory cell. You turn this on, then no matter what you do to that other side, it will not change until you unlock it or reset it on that side. Next one is going to be the rapid pulser. This one, technically, it has one input and many outputs, although you really most likely are just going to have one output. And you'll, you'll see what I mean in just a moment. But it is made from inverters. It will pulse rapidly from all sides unless it's given a constant signal. So here's our rapid pulser. I have a NOT gate or an inverter to keep it off um, per se. So once we flip it on, you'll see that by default, the rapid pulser is just going to shoot out rapidly on all sides. Very good for having like dispensers to spam someone with potions, arrows, fire charges, or make a nice, lovely firework display. I mentioned that we can have many outputs simply because, as you can see here, we can have this go out all different sides. It does not matter. And the amount of outputs you give yourself really depends on what your project is. Last but not least, we have the imply gate. It has two inputs. It requires a master switch and a child switch. With the master switch off, the output is always on, but the child switch cannot change its output state. With the master switch on, the output will reflect the state of the child switch. So here we are, we have the master switch and we have the child switch over here. We have ourselves a bit of an inverter set up on that side. So right now the master switch is off, which means the child switch cannot do anything. It depends on this one. If we're able to change this one, it implies that this one is also on. So for example, we turn this one now, it's on, and it will allow the child switch to change its state. And there you have it, everybody. That is our logic gates. Thank you all again so much for joining. This is Timeless Traveler with the How To Redstone series. I hope now after watching this tutorial, for those wondering how logic gates work, that you understand the concept functionality of these gates a bit more and possibly are even able to incorporate these into some of your builds or even just start practicing them on your own. Like I mentioned in a previous episode, all it really takes is repetition and practice when it comes to the learning curve and you will get all of these down and you will understand how to incorporate these into your builds and become better at Redstone. And if this video helped you out in any way today, don't forget to uh, let me know with a like. Let me know down below also in the comments how this uh, tutorial has helped you out today. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and slap that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all future content. So you all take care, have an amazing day, and I will see you in the next video.